Okay, just playing a nice little trading game in preparation for the over the board tournament this weekend coming. So we've done the practice in learning the loss. So we do like doing that. So we've gone through quite a few games there, just basically losing and understanding the losses and really analyzing them so i've analyzed all of those losses looked at how the opponent played how they were looking at gaining advantages how they were basically maneuvering the pieces that type of stuff just to really get a good understanding of the opponent's kind of psychology and the only way i can do that really is to look at how they take advantage of weaknesses etc going forward and to me it's a little bit advanced thinking it's a bit unusual thinking as well people don't like to lose you know um so how can you learn from that i can i think i've explained it in quite a few of the videos especially from my virtual um my virtual guider and if you don't understand what that means then you can always check out the videos on the humble chess wizard so i'm going to castle here so again, this is still a training exercise, but we're, we're bumping it up a little bit. I don't want to overexert myself. I don't want to burn myself out before the competition. So we're still in the process of having a look at what the opponent is doing, but we're looking to try and maybe grab maybe some advantage in the game. Uh, it's not necessarily to look for a win, but looking for potential advan advantages. Just letting you understand my psychology of how I kind of prepare for a, a real type serious um, game because it doesn't have to be a tournament it could just be a game that I want to potentially look at getting an advantage in so this one here is a training exercise I'm going to bring this bishop here still keep the diagonal through I mean it's got all the way through to the queen in a sense so we'll just bring it back so it's opening up space around this king can we take advantage of that he's got his protector which is the knight so we can actually attack his bishop so his bishop doesn't have anywhere to go so he'll lose the bishop disorientate the king a little bit uh, so that's quite nice for us he's moved his rook so his bishop could get away but let's disorientate the king his knight is still acting as a good protector there at the moment so i don't want to over egg anything so slightest of advantages but what can we do with it i'm actually going to bring the knight here i believe the pawn is going to overextend even more because we've got a two on one there he's got two on one protection with his knight and his rook i believe this pawn is going to go well i'm going to just move you out of the way oh maybe this pawn okay so we can come here looking to put a check on the king with the knight here and but this guy this knight is protecting this key square because our queen is chomping at the bit to get here so maybe we have to come around the side once this knight's moved get the queen here something like that so this op this opening already is pretty interesting i think at this po mo point in time i could say quite happily mm, i'm fairly comfortable with that but he has blocked off that diagonal now with this i was looking to plan to bring the queen across here to come across here but his knight's blocking so if we did take the knight, his rook comes down, is in the centre of the board. Rooks don't really have any place in the centre of the board. We still do have the knight check, but our knight doesn't have any protection on it. So the king could come and attack it. So where does the knight go from there? I'd have to just come back again. So I don't think I'm going to waste my time with that check at this moment. I am considering taking and getting their rook into the centre of the board, which it really doesn't have any place being there. We can also push our pawn onto the knight because at the minute the knight is just i don't know it's maybe potentially i don't know is it what's it realistically doing maybe looking to hang here more so than anything else yeah so if we push the pawn up onto the knight pawn takes then that opens up more space around his king he doesn't have to take obviously but i think i'm going to go with that i feel like i'm talking really fast i've not had any coffee or anything So he does take so it's opening up more space around the king so the bishop can take or the rook can take but the thing is his knights are covering all these lovely key squares at the moment so i'm taking with the bishop for now and he's moved dead quick with his um knight and his knight again is covering these lovely key squares here knight could come now to attack the king 
if the king does drop queen can't really come and defend it but if it does drop the knight can attack the uh, king again okay so let's look at that logic keep the pressure on the king for now king comes down to attack it because it's not got any protection on swing it back down put a check on the king but the queen really can't get in here this knight is doing such a fantastic job and again the question is what is this knight doing it's attacking this pawn here it's unprotected but happy for it to take this pawn because it's going to be on the other side of the board so he does drop down so we'll come here attacking he may continue his attack maybe not because he's, he can't come in there he can't come in there so he goes back so he could potentially be looking for a draw in this kind of situation because i could just go bouncing backwards and forwards and and that would be job done as far as this game is concerned because we're not really looking to push ourselves further but i tell you what let's just give it a little bit of a touch here on the night i think he's going to be tempting to move this uh, at some point bishop's okay there but maybe if we take them we're sort of developing his queen into the game and this knight is only protected once queen could come knight can't come because the pawn is protecting okay so we could jump back again with the knight putting a check on the king does that seem like a bit of a waste or can the queen look a bit proactive now start coming into the middle yeah let's bring the queen into the middle a little bit get it a bit more activated maybe we could get like a two on one type thing on the knight or something and his knight is protecting this square now so he's moved his ooh, his queen is protecting the protecting once but then this bishop can put a check on his king because his the pawn is not protected anymore and then we maybe can come here x-ray through to the queen obviously he can still move his knight but so there might be potential for getting the rook up and up uh, well, do I have a two on one actually queen could take do I want to save my queen I'm going to actually bring the rook up this queen's got the capture but the knight's going to oh and they've resigned okay so we, we added a bit of pressure in that game it, that was really quite entertaining to watch um, with our focus on we weren't really looking for a win we were looking at just trying to develop a little bit further the advantages we can potentially gain in a game as we mentioned at the beginning we went through the learning from loss um, process so there was quite a lot of games that we played which we, we lost um, so understanding from the opponent side of things how they're delivering their games understanding the weak areas that they're attacking how do they take advantage of weaknesses this is how I prepare for real you know games that i'm really looking to, looking forward to actually playing and hopefully maybe trying to gain some advantage in them it's not saying i'm going to win anything um but this is the way that i train i'm hoping fingers crossed that the over the board competition that i'm going to um it, it stands us in good stead so this game here was particularly quite interesting in terms of the development of the pieces I'm just going to break it down for ourselves in fact we broke it down throughout the game really so i don't need to labor too much on the evaluation just want to see again what the computer is saying regarding um the situation so came out and we castle keeping it all steady nice and steady not overextending and capture capture so then they attacked the bishop we brought the bishop back and then they attacked our knight so then we could attack their bishop they were making space for the bishop so we attacked the bishop trust me i haven't had any coffee i don't know why i'm talking so fast and so they attacked the knight smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong um on this occasion potentially is so because it's like opening up more space around the king but again it's a, a matter of being able to take advantage of that because like we said this knight is really covering some lovely key squares there preventing our queen from getting into the game so we attack a higher piece with a lesser piece which is the pawn just to open up space in front of the king which is really quite dangerous but it's how you do it just because you have opened up space around the king doesn't mean you've got a, a key advantage okay so it does weaken the area it's about being able to try and challenge that 
So the gauge bar is definitely on our side, it's got 4.9, I wonder if there's any major dips here. The Knight's gone all the way across the other side of the board, again we were happy with them taking this pawn if they were going to, because it's on the other side of the board. So they've manoeuvred and we are put a check on the King, and it's not saying that that's a wrong thing, it's gone up 5.3, uh, but it doesn't like the Knight move doesn't like the knight move can't really support it have i got a fork Ooh, have i got a magical fork no 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 i can't see anything uh do, 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 do. oh you know i have damn damn i can't be missing stuff like that oh damn it's right there in front of my face my focal point was on this knight controlling these areas so any movements I was thinking potentially of going anywhere else were going to be nullified by the king. I think I put too much power to this knight, thinking it was guarding everything. Oh, dear me, knight taking the pawn here. Would have been quite nice. Just gaining a bit of material, opening up a bit more space around the king. Oh, damn. Okay, so we missed that. We put a check on the king, so they've still got to think about something. So they move the king back. So then we're attacking their piece with a smaller piece. And now we're making space for the queen to try and get activated. We're looking really for some lovely x-ray, maybe bringing the bishop here, you know, the two-on-one type situation. Uh, but he wasn't having any of that, so that freed up this space here for our bishop to actually take the pawn. And then they brought their king across, uh, so we could now take because we've got a two on one here. So it's amazing how we see the two on one here, but we missed that little minuscule two on one there. That's because it was a pawn, and that's because the knight was there, and we gave the knight too much credit. Damn. And then the opponent resigned at this point. So yeah, really interesting game, really liked that. Just not for the win, we weren't looking to win, we were looking to try and see if we could bump up, gaining any advantages in the game. So that's a nice little preparation match for um, this weekend's over the ball tournament. We'll be playing some more, so um, probably going to take some um, vicious losses, but we're going to learn from those vicious losses because we're, we're preparing ourselves for the OTB competition. Okay, so a bit of um, puzzle training or tactics training, if you like. Um, I know I've said I'm not a fan of these types of things, but in order to understand tactics um, you kind of have to immerse yourself in tactics and I, I believe I have said that um, in order to circumvent any sort of tactical things being done to you using the answer you should be um, able to block off those types of things in order to improve your position on the board so it'd be silly of me to not know what tactics are and just think that, oh, I can just do positional play and then get caught short with some fancy tactic that just blows you out of the water. And I may have mentioned as well, I mean, I've got about, what is it, four books on the go at the minute, which do cover tactical type practices and strategies and that type of stuff. So. Uh, there's one particular book which I really love and I've got halfway through it and I've actually gone right back to the beginning again to um, practice those types of uh, manoeuvres and it's not really tactical it's more a case of that you're looking at like the best moves um, that the the book is offering and then at the end of the day yeah you can call it tactics training but it's um, it's just in a book and then you've, you're sort of following the lines that really are the best moves so in, es in essence, it's trying to get that understanding of the magical things that people can pull out on you, when especially when you've got an advantage in the game, especially when you think that you're just about to get a checkmate or you're just about to take a major piece off the board and then suddenly you've fallen into a trap and you can't get back out and the opponent then takes that advantage away from you. So these are why I practice these sort of tactical type things. Um, I've only just started doing tactics on uh, this chess.com malarkey so this is why my number is really low so you know at the end of the day I'm not bothered about the lowness I'm, I'm just interested in practicing the moves so let me just crack on it's black to move it's not to say I'm going to make any of this I'm gonna to have to tell myself a story now okay so 
black to move and win you'd think that queen going here would just get a straight checkmate wouldn't you and it might be because of the level that i'm at which is four six eight you know you might think oh well okay he's only doing baby ones but i will tell you any money i've seen these types of positions in matches even against higher level players um, and they miss little tiny things like these yeah because they're so embroiled in looking at whatever it is the opponent's doing maybe they're trying to block that off but this is a quite a nice touch i think it's that do we all think it's that i think it's that so i'm actually going to go with that okay so he says confidently so we'll move on to the next okay right so black to move again so we could push the pawn here but then obviously it gets taken because he's got like two pieces on there could push this pawn and then obviously his bishop has to take so we take the bishop then we push here and then we take his rook off the board as well so we'd be kind of pieces up in a sense so i'm thinking it's pushing this pawn i could be wrong though because it's not got a check on has it really interesting times if we push there his rook can come down here with a check on us we move up maybe we don't move up that way probably move here because he's got a white square bishop because he we're getting checks on us all over the place and yeah this is going to be so basic but you know i'm taking my time because he, he does have a check on us go there his bishop or his rook takes that's a major that's a major one if we go there because it's actually got the queen so then he has to do something so the maybe the bishop takes because he's saving his rook but he doesn't have to even still i mean we could leave the queen there and then he could still come down put a check on us because we could queen he comes down puts a check on we're dancing what does the rook really do from there he can't really come in. he could attack the pawn here but he's not going to be fast enough we'd have the queen and we'd be blasting him apart okay i'm just think. i think it's i'm thinking too much i think i think it is this move here because it's got the two pawns linked up then if the bishop takes bishop takes rook can't go there because he'll get taken so then he will come down he should come down with a check on the king that's when we can move here but then it doesn't have any more checks on the king and then we could just push the pawn up hmm i bet i'm gonna be wrong i'm gonna push this pawn oh i got a tick i got a tick oh interesting so obviously i should be just taking back and it's correct yay eight in a row eight in a row i've, I've not dropped yet uh, i practiced some earlier in the week as well and um, in the build up to the tournament type thing and we've not done too bad some may go yeah these are easy ones but that's my rating you've got to start somewhere aren't you um right okay okay but it still took you know the thinking through process does help even if it is a simple one the thinking through process really does help i mean my concern was him coming down here with the check but it didn't look like he had any further checks on me so hopefully in the over the board game when i'm playing i can think like that and not give them too much credit in terms of what they can do to me but still really um take guard as to yes they can do it but you know that you can actually defend against it so it's key little tiny points like that so i don't care how, how strong these tests are and um, what i care about is me being able to read and tell the story to myself and hopefully find the appropriate positions because as i've always said the thing i don't like about tactics training is that i don't play like that or I wouldn't end up in positions like that, you know, especially as you get higher up and you're doing the, the harder ones. Um, 
my brain just does not think like how they think and the the problem is as well there can be other variable moves that would get you a good position as well but it doesn't take that into account so that can be quite annoying so uh, was that just one that we've just done there yeah okay so sort of aim to do like six because there's like six matches um in the over the board swiss uh, tournament this weekend so sort of aiming to do like six puzzles and um, play six games um, and the games we're playing now are more focused now uh, we've done the learning to loss like we're learning to lose like we've said before and we've picked up quite a few things from there so now we're trying to just up the game a little bit not burn ourselves out because you know you don't want to shine just yet you want to shine at the tournament black to move again wow there's a lot of black moving i mean i do like playing as black okay so what we got he's got like a rook he's got a rook he's got a bishop he looks like he's ready to mash me up all this business he looks like he's ready for a i've only got a queen how's this gonna work hmm how is this gonna work that rook's got protection on this one doesn't so the queen can actually just take this rook off the board I think that would be okay wouldn't it it looks like it's that straightforward but then also i could take here with a check on his king and then get a checkmate oh gosh it's good to talk into it yeah if i rush taking here i'm missing the opportunity oh dear me take check checkmate that's it isn't it and mate oh beautiful beautiful that's the sort of position that would be in the likes of games that I'm playing and those are the opportunities I probably would miss because I'd be going oh let's just take here you know and reduce down and then take this game home and go I can't believe I could have just put a check on him here and got a checkmate I know it looks simple but you playing over the board game right yeah under pressure and if you get into the back end of this here you'll have been playing for a, a, quite a bit you know so your brain would be tunnel visioned so i'm trying to get rid of the tunnel visioning type situation so that was fairly quite interesting okay well going for the next one and if i get stuck i'm not going to do it i'm just gonna i'll i can't come back to it but i'll just try and get it as best possible it has to be nailed on in terms of understanding black to move again wow it must know that i like playing as black okay cool so the king's all jammed up in the corner it's almost kind of home alone because this half of the board is like kind of empty his knight's covering this nice little square here but he's not covering this square so you're looking at checks and then a rook Ooh, then a rook maybe coming here with a check mate oh checkmate <gasps> maybe a checkmate but no the knight comes in front in a checkmate yeah queen comes here i might be overthinking it but he can't do anything else can he? nothing else can come in the way of it so then he goes there and this queen is covering this line so then either one of the rooks can go and put a check on now that's the question either one of the rooks can go and put a check on is it going to be funny about which one not you shouldn't really should it because nothing gets taken okay let's correct oh it's correct hot streak you got 10 puzzles right in a row <gasps> very good i got a hot streak i got a hot streak i could stop there now actually i got a hot streak i meant to do six but i got a hot streak a new personal best yay i'm gonna stop there i'm going to smile be happy with what we've just done and really the key thing is not to get the tunnel vision really have a look at the position that i've got and is it actually a checkmate or is it me just looking to reduce down the pieces and then losing that advantage i don't want to lose the advantage i want to keep it and keep that pressure on and don't waste any time i don't want to have to bring the game back home with me and then look at it and go oh you could have done x y and z I want to be able to do the evaluation in the game at the moment at that time and hopefully make the right moves okay let's just uh, develop the knight through here 
and as we've said before this is just like a a game to have a look at if we can grab a bit of an advantage in the game and just maybe maintain a little bit of management of our own but we're not really looking to gain a win um, we've done the learning from the loss games and now we're looking at bumping it up a little bit but not too much just nice and steady I'm going to grab the pawn here because like we know we like to sort of obliterate the center a little bit and work around the center if we're allowed to okay so now they they've brought that we might need to make some space maybe for castling a bit of Uman and Arvin let's just bring the bishop out it is attacking a piece it's doing something and I do like to hear the the grandmasters and the you know the senior level people high level people going oh you know um you see the lower level players just they just want to attack something that's all they want to do they just want to attack and 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 they lose the essence of the game um that's not necessarily true you know you know simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board you watch a, a master's face when pieces are taken off the board that they've got they do get worried yeah you watch a streamer's face, an IM, a national master or a grandmaster. You watch their face when a piece gets taken off the board. Yes, they'll probably still end up winning, but watch their face. It's like, whoa, damn, what do I do now? So there's no real truth in the fact of just because they're taking pieces off the board. It doesn't mean you're rubbish. If you try and do it strategically, you can upset many players. I don't care who they are, you can upset many players. It's all about, but I think trying to make sure that you're in a half decent position as well. I'm not saying I'm going to do that in this game, but I'm going to castle. So yeah, listen. When you, uh, for me, <laughs> um, there's maybe one or two real life um, players that I would. I would listen to but I wouldn't take everything that they say as the law you know you have to have your own mind and your own opinion about things or else this rook doesn't have any protection on but there might be method in their madness but I'm going to see what method they've got so I'm going to bring the queen through attacking the rook if they forget themselves we can take it off the board they might not do it might be a little bit of a set trap thing and it doesn't look like it at the minute so I'm going to take because this pawn can't drop to block the queen coming back so we'll take the rook off the board with a check on the king still mindful and you know, I don't really like overworking the king queen but just in case anything bad happens we do have escape routes so I really like my pieces working together but if there's gold to be taken sometimes there's gold to be taken but I do remember playing in an over the board game many moons ago where I jumped my queen in on this side of the board and i thought yeah i'll take this pawn and then it ended up getting trapped okay so he didn't bring the queen back to exchange so i think i'm just going to bring my queen back out of there now i think that makes proper sense got a two on one here he's got two on one protection I'm looking to get my other pieces out so if he brings his bishop out he's going to be charging in onto our queen so we probably need to move the queen now if we move it here then we're kind of threatening that we're going to take if he's going to bring his bishop so he may just drop that to support but if he does drop that then we take the knight very nice so he didn't fall for that maneuver I am seriously overworking my queen here so somebody please tell me to stop it now okay so we'll come here then he puts a check on go here we still puts the check on yeah he's coming with his bishop isn't he let's go here so he might look to come here with his knight let's get these other pieces out now we've got an extra piece off the board but now we need to look at getting position we've tried some cheap shots trying to get the pawn extra on the top here but he has got his pieces that look a little bit the out look like they might be in the game so which one would I'm plumping to just come here first with the bishop to get that out but it all depends if he just brings his knight here that kind of spoils that a little bit 
he may be looking to queenside castle because he can't castle on the other side so a simple move here or maybe here or does he attack the knight options okay so i'll sit and wait for them to make their move because it can hurt your head when you're kind of thinking of what they potentially can do and then your potential reactions to that So I think I've done quite a bit of work uh, leading up to this over the board um, competition and I'm hoping I'm not doing too much because over the board games seem a little bit weird compared to over the board games. Um, remember in the past where I've done loads of practice on the, you know online online and then I go and play a competition and I'm like going um, sorry an over the board competition and it feels like I'm playing an alien like they're not actually playing chess and they're just finding all the magical moves so it is a bit bad playing online and then thinking that you can go and play it over the board you have to really adjust yourself and i probably was going to bring the knight here actually as well wasn't I? yeah let's just bring the knight here so now I'm sort of sitting back a little bit, waiting to see what they do. Hopefully they can overextend. But at the same time, I'm trying to see if there's any weaknesses that we can try and grab hold of. Doesn't appear to be any at the minute. So what is he trying to fashion? Obviously, he's good. I thought he was going to go queenside castling, but he's pushed all these pawns down here. Not that that means he can't go on queenside castle. But I think he's dropped these to stop all the bishop coming here and the knights jumping there and stuff nice spot my king could be feeling maybe a bit home alone but not not too much because we've got the knight here and the other pieces are kind of on the other side of the board central i can't see a major attack coming from him just yet starts formulating that's not too major So I think the next move will tell what we actually want to do because ideas of pushing this pawn up if we move this knight out of the way might have a bit more weight to it do a lazy man's chest and just push this up for you know just to push it up or I could just push it to block the knight potentially attacking the queen all small moves nothing major the bishop moves again which i don't think it's going to i think they are going to go queenside castling out there not that far but there gets in there so if the queen's oh he's gone for the attack on the game um, this pawn doesn't have any protection on it so he's probably gonna have to go back there so if we go here with the queen then we're attacking this pawn but we're also attacking the knight as well so he's probably going back with his knight yep okay let's do that oh he's not oh he's got my rook oh he's done it for an exchange oh this guy's clever oh this guy's clever wow did you see that he set that baby up right reason i'm not moving fast is because i'm thinking if he did move that fast he might have still messed up but I don't think he has. Ooh, this lovely space here. Because I could get his other rook, couldn't I? If I drop down and then he takes our rook, then I go with a check on his king. Then I get his rook off the board. So I would have both of his rooks off the board. Obviously, his knight will take this pawn here, but. Does that is that going too far am i going too far i'm actually going to bring the queen down here yeah and see if we can get his rook off the board as well different way of thinking but he moved there so fast why is he not taking the rook now then that's what his plan was He's probably seeing now. If he does move, then obviously our rook gets saved, then doesn't it? Because we can move the rook out of the way. 
Yeah, so he's lost tempo now. They're doing that. But is he going to get our queen? Is my queen trapped? Look, he doesn't have much spaces, does it? Okay, so let's just move the rook out of the way now then. And he's protecting the knight as well. So we'll have to just give the knight a little bit of a touch here. So that was a bit of an interesting little exchange at that time. But as I've said, I mean, basically players just find stuff. You know, just because we got this guy's rook off the board, now this, this guy's playing like um, a GM type thing. So you have to be very, very careful. My queen's getting squished with his pawn attacks. Okay, so this is turned into something interesting. We've got the opponent mad um, based on the fact that we've taken their rook off the board. Now they're taking really long time over their moves and they're finding the better moves. Interesting times. I have to check the evaluation afterwards just to make sure that um, hopefully we're on the right track. So things to worry about. Queen getting squished by some pawn. You know, the worst case scenario, your queen getting taken by a pawn. Where's he going? I don't think he's going to move just yet, is he? Is he going to go queenside castling after all that? He's got a dark square bishop as well, but he's blocked by his pawns at the minute. So our queen's not under threat that way. Okay, I'm stopping thinking now. Let's see what the opponent does. Okay, so he's queenside castled. Okay, so this is making for an interesting game now. This is the type of game I'm wanting to play actually in, in terms of trying to bump up the advantage a little bit. Again, we're not focused on the win. We're just looking at trying to improve our position on the board. His rook is opposite the pawn here. We were going to just touch the knight. Don't really need to deliberate about that. So he goes back. So he's moving a bit, a little bit swift now. Could bring the knight here. We've got like a two on one. He's got three pieces on there, but we do attack this pawn as well. So I'm actually going to bring this here. The knight then has a check on the king if he allows us that. I believe the king's probably going to drop there just to protect it. Doesn't do. Okay, let's take. So for a brief moment, we're on this pawn, which then, well, it's very brief, like I said. Um, so we could attack the knight. Obviously, the king is going to come and protect. Is that what we want to do? Anything else? My queen is working very hard in this game. It's like it's having a bit of fun. Is there any piece that I can take? No pieces that I can take. Nothing I can attack. I think we'll squeeze in here because this piece is unprotected at the moment. Nice and steady away. Again, it's a trap about trying to put, pull in you know your your strategical practice that you've been with going through you know what we will class as the puzzles or the tactics you know is there a tactic that the opponent is trying to do on you but is there also something that you can attempt to do on them which improves your position yeah so i would definitely plump for a tactic that puts a gives me a better position on the board than anything else not one that just simply grabs a few pieces of material but your position is absolutely garbage okay so now got that there his rook is opposite our queen nothing going here nothing going here absolutely nothing it looks like it's going to be a lazy man's attack up this side which which lazy man is it going to be it's one of these the king is home alone ish trying to make space on this um file a if we push he can always just push down if we push here and he pushes down then we take his knight can take but we're then kind of ready to open up space around here i'm actually going to push this pawn this is going to be the lazy man do have this diagonal coming through here it's not supported at the minute just thinking out loud Oh, what am I doing? Whoa, 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 steady on. <laughs> I don't want to lose like that. I want to lose with grace. Yep. Okay, so we're attacking the pawn. It can always push down. And then it's just like, oh, he's attacking the queen. It's 
attacking the queen. He's got some cleverness, this play. You know, he's got some cleverness. Do we want to swing all the way around here? Then he comes with his pawn. Or do we come back here? Then he still comes with his pawn. Mm -mm -mm. He's got some, maybe come here. need to come away from that uh, let me see then he drops down can come here we've still got sights of attacking this pawn and trying to open up this area so I'm not losing too much sleep about that his rook is opposite our queen so I don't want anything kicking off and then we can't actually move the queen because of or take because he's going to be taking if we did come back here and it does push the pawn down we can take take okay let's just do that when I say take take we can oops, sorry take with the pawn here so does he move it's probably better if he does move because then if we're there then we take with the bishop then we're really getting a mess in this area so that'd be quite nice for us if he takes i still think it's not too bad for us actually because we're around the king area the rooks getting ready to start getting into activation so all in all i don't think it's too bad for us unless he changes his tack but then we can just bring this here yeah so i think the lazy man in its own right has done something his king is home alone, his pieces are on the other side of the board. There's no major attacks on our king at the moment. So it should stand us in good stead for trying to maybe maintain some type of advantage. But this player's got some serious skills. It's the building up as, oh, so he's dropped it so we did say that was okay for us and um, no big issues because we were looking to just challenge this area here so that was it's nice to do the forward calculation because it does help you to move faster um, but also have that confidence that you've already covered it off so you're not having to so it does move his king so before we do that the knight is covering this lovely key square it's like in the previous game the knights are covering lovely spaces he's got a two on one protection with his queen and his rook so we can't take this i think simply taking this pawn here like we said just want to open up this area and just bring this rook here and then bring the other rook across and where the king is home alone he's so home alone it's unreal oh no we didn't really want that but we'll take this here i think he's going to come here and then our rook is trapped oh no just come here can go there with the rook if the king comes here then we'll get the knight off the board because we've got the bishop protecting this area so i think yeah the lazy man concept kind of worked for us up to that point so far his king is still home alone and um, singly defended by the knight the knight is still coming out with clever stuff i think i still think the movements are clever it's just that the principle of his king being home alone and his piece is not working together is working for us so i'm hoping they don't i hope they just keep doing single moves the temptation is to attack the rook because it's got no protection so we can come here and then take his rook off the knight off the board uh, we can still attack no well we can still attack it it's just that it's not so if we bring the rook here can't actually put a check on the king because his knight again is protecting the lovely square but it's an open file so rooks like the open files still can squeeze through here and at this point then if his knight did attack then our queen could come here with a check potentially a checkmate really so i could have done that first so he would be he would have gone there i think with the knight attacking the queen he might not do that now 
so that's my mini tactical type of situation where I believe it improves my position if we go here if he attacks which he's more to set to probably do because he's done it before so then we just squeeze here again it might look too obvious So at the minute his poor queen has not really been too much in the game whereas our queen had been overworked in this game but we're trying to improve our position so okay so he's moved so he's looking to defend himself over here so if we do move we're thinking he's more to set to go here so then we can still put the check on but it's not a checkmate because he does have a space to come here but the queen can just come here I suppose he can go up and down so maybe we'll just oh he's going for a queen exchange rook can put a check on and then the king can't protect the queen so we get the queen for free that's what I'm thinking that's immediately what my brain is saying but is there some trick trick does he get my rook instead but well, I'll get his queen there's nothing blocking so we put the check on the king the king can't protect the queen anymore either goes here or it goes here to attack the rook to get compensation to say well at least i got a piece off okay so just because i'm going for the queen oh going for the queen maybe i could go for a checkmate no i can't oh oh man and they've resigned okay so that's another one where looking for that position play this is what we're saying we're just we're not really over egging anything in these games now um it's only what is it two days away from the actual over the ball tournament so we're not over pressing in any way we really want to explain the story to ourselves so that hopefully it sticks in our brain as to how we can um mobilize in the game not saying we played this these games perfect at all in any way shape but we're feeling a little bit better about the story that we're telling ourselves as we're playing them so we brought this one down again as well so we don't really need to go into anything meaty but we're just checking what the evaluation is saying about the game okay so we grab the knight okay usually the computers don't like that uh, maneuver yeah it, it just dipped but i didn't really have a problem with it and i did give that little story about you know the higher level people saying oh the lo lower level players just want to simply take pieces off the board and as i said watch their faces when pieces start getting taken off the board of theirs okay so we brought the queen through attacking the rook hoping that they forget themselves and they did so we grabbed so it's given us a bit of an advantage there but again as we've said it's more about positional play just because you've got pieces off the board it doesn't mean you've won anything you have to still mobilize to try and improve your position with all of your other pieces now this is me just uh, dancing with my queen and um, to me that's an error in my play so i shouldn't really be doing that but i want to get this stuff out of the way before we actually play the over the board game gauge bar is not saying that's bad either i think it understood the idea because in essence i was thinking well if he comes out with his bishop we take the pawn and then we're on his knight as well and we're on his rook as well so that gives them pressure there so i suppose it's a legitimate move so we'll move the queen back only issue is it's that it's just moving that queen constantly and look at these two pieces here they're not developed rooks not developed so doing that sort of maneuver does slow down your development so we bring the bishop out and develop the knight so we're fairly happy now so we did assume he was probably going to attack with his knight and then they brought the bishop through that part did shock me i didn't um, put that in my mental roller decks but then we did talk it through and we said well if we go here if he does take i mean let's see what the gauge bar is showing it's still showing 6.3 for us i don't even think it moved that much did it queen up this is that slow eval bar chess.com sort it out man okay six seven and then when we moved da, 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 i'm waiting i'm waiting so it was 8.3 and then it dropped to 6.1 let's just have a look at that so oh, oh no it's not that you know what <laughs> But still, 
No, I, I didn't want his knight. I didn't want his knight. Yeah, I mean, this is saying queen take um, b4 here, and then he takes here. Yeah, but I didn't want his knight. Not in that way. So I felt okay with what I did. Yeah. I was just about to kick myself saying I could have taken the knight, but that, that wasn't of any interest to me. Um, again, that's a strange psychology. I'm more about the positional play. And this is why I, I play the way I play. Um, taking that, I didn't believe would improve my position. So they pushed the pawn down, they're blocking off stuff. So now we can move the rook out of the way. So the gauge bar is still showing that way, 7.2, blah, blah, you know, type thing. So it's not really dipped that much, even from not taking the knight. And then they castle. So now we're looking to get rid of the knight and just develop the knight going up. I'm waiting to see any major, major dips. That's what I'm looking for. Um, takes, takes, and I just like the story that we will be able to develop, you know, for each of the movements that we we're making. Uh, we went for a lazy man thing just this is the key thing i wanted to see what happened there really and then they moved the knight so it's 8.1 move the queen back come on gauge bra are you still thinking what you're doing yeah okay right so they push the pawn down so at this point now we're like mm, what do we do but we did say all along we're just going to try and open up this area because the king is home alone all these pieces are on the other side of the board so we attacked attacked and brought the rook up and then we could take the pawn so it's now plus 12 at the minute and then they brought the queen up and then we had our little tactical type situation going on here but they went for the queen exchange instead but we could put the check on the king and the king could then really not do anything at that point So we could have taken, or we were looking for something fancy, but then they resigned at that point. Damn. So another interesting pre-over-the-board game where realistically I think the opponent gifted it to us. So we've not actually really pushed ourselves in these games. We're really wanting to learn and hopefully take, take forward the good practices that we've been putting into play. We have not played an over-the-board tournament for so many years. It's like, oh dear me. So we're hoping that we can just um, come out with half decent performance. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll be really pleased if we can because it'll be a nice follow-on from what we had done um, prior to the lockdown process.